Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the North American B-25 Mitchell. It's a 172 scale aircraft from Airfix, model number A04005. Now, it was named after Bill Mitchell, who was a, a leading proponent of American air power uh, after World War I. And it became famous for the Tokyo Raid in 1942, when uh, Jimmy Doolittle flew the raid with 16 Mitchells to attack uh, the Japanese mainland. It was uh, heavily armed and could carry 3,000 pounds of bombs for the uh, H version and was one of the most heavily armed aircraft in the world at the time. It had a maximum speed of 280 uh, miles an hour and a range of 1,275 miles. Now the original release of the uh, Airfix was in 1965 for this kit and it was reissued uh, and this uh, kit uh, was marked as a 2008 reissue and it's also been produced by many makers. Now when you're finished the kit will be about uh, 11 and a quarter inches uh, with a wingspan and about 8 and 3 quarter inches long. It contains 118 parts molded in light gray and as you can see, it also has a clear canopy and some nice looking decals. Start by inspecting the kit and wash it in some mild soap detergent and warm water, then let it air dry to remove any contaminants from the surface. We'll be using some liquid modeling cement for most of the construction and or some white glue or clear glue for the uh, clear parts. Uh, but also remember to heed the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products that you see or hear used in the review. When the parts are dry, go ahead and glue uh, the cockpit subassembly together. I use some uh, wooden clothespins to do a lot of my clamping uh, and they're very handy uh, because they don't apply too much pressure but keep the parts together until they set. Now the instructions are pretty clear but they only have uh, callouts for Humbrol brand paints so I didn't have any of that <laughs> so I went to the uh, internet and found a conversion chart there's several out there but here's the one I used uh, to convert to my um, model master and other paints uh, so that I'd get a good uh, match with the stuff that I had on hand paint drying on the cockpit I decided to put the wings together so remove those from the sprues and clean up uh, the attachment points points you'll find that unfortunately there's some big gates uh, on them and uh, you'll lose some detail on the edges and we'll have to f uh, fix that later on uh, but go ahead and, and put the wings together and use the clamps to keep them in position the old mold technology shows here on the clear parts with ejector pin marks on the glass so I removed uh, the parts uh, 39 and 117 and I used some sandpaper uh, with some 400 grit to start to try and remove uh, those ejector pin marks and all the way up to a 4000 grit to smooth it out and it, so that it was still clear. To help finish those off I dipped all the glass parts in some Pledge Future floor polish and let the uh, wick off and then dry overnight in clamped position. I decided to build this model with the gear up uh, and if you want the gear installed you have to um, install those gear put them together and then open up the nacelles so um, I wanted a uh, flying model to hang from the ceiling so I went ahead and glued all those panels together over the engine nacelles and bonded them onto each wing and the gear doors were glued in the closed position as you can see when you do that the gaps are pretty excessive um, but we'll have to uh, repair those later. Uh, in the meantime, everything was pretty straight and went together well. I'll get the 14 pieces out to build the um, tail section, and the elevators and rudders don't do move, so uh, the sequence of assembly needs to be followed, you know, correctly. First, cement the upper and lower horizontal stabilizer halves together, and place the right elevator onto the horizontal stabilizer hinges, and then cement the upper elevator to the lower being careful not to get any glue or cement on the hinge. Now assemble the left elevator following the same instructions as the right. The rudders are molded in one piece, so starting with the uh, right ventricle fin, I uh, place the outside 
vertical fin over the hinges of the rudder. Now carefully glue the inside vertical fin to the outside vertical fin making sure no glue gets on the hinge. Repeat for the left side and make sure that the parts are uh, symmetrical and that they're perpendicular to each other. These older kits quite often came with figures. So now the cockpit was ready for some detailing. The pilot, the co-pilot and the gunners were all painted flat brown uh, flight suits with flat black boots, uh, flat black oxygen masks and flat white collars and light green visors. Now when you glue those uh, pilots and the gunner into position, mock uh, fit that to the fuselage so that they're in the correct position, especially the gunner who has to be vertical there and <laughs> fit in through the turret. All of the machine guns were painted flat black followed by a silver pastel brushing. I did that by rubbing a silver pencil on some 220 grit sandpaper and then dipping a soft paintbrush into the shavings and applying them to the desired area. The cockpit and the entire fuselage were dry brushed with some silver pastels as well. Next, glue the upper turret guns to the upper turret gunner's hands and before the fuselage can be closed up, the tail guns were glued together, making sure the barrels were parallel. When they were dry, we're ready to close the fuselage. And first, I glued the cockpit assembly into the left fuselage. Next, I glued the waste gunner uh, into the right fuselage half. I placed these parts into the fuselage so that they can still move the front crew door, the bomb bay doors, the rear crew door, and the pre-assembled tail guns. It's time to enclose the fuselage, so carefully place the right onto the left side, making sure that all the movable doors are hinged correctly and function. Now, this will be um, glued shut because there will be a gear up display. So, Once the halves are put together and aligned as carefully as you can, use some clothespins, tape, clamps, whatever you need to make sure that it has good tight seams. Then I applied cement to the seams, allowing capillary action to distribute the adhesive using some thin modeling cement. You can glue the tail gunner into position at this time as well. And there's a uh, small d deflector that gets glued onto the top of the fuselage so you can put that into place now too. Now it's time to fit the wings to the fuselage and as you can see here it's got a little droop. There's some negative dihedral. So uh, we're going to resolve that by stretching some, some tape from uh, the tip to the wing tip after we've applied the glue across the top of the fuselage to create a slight positive dihedral. The nose piece, part number 116, has several mold marks on the inside and it's visible so I sanded the inside prior to gluing and painting that. And the nose gear doors were also glued into position at this time. When she's dried, she'll be ready uh, to fill the seams and prep for a top coat. You can see what you have to work with here um, and it is very old mold technology. Uh, there are quite uh, significant gaps in it and so we're going to have to do the best we can to clean those up. To minimize any uh, sanding damage to the surrounding area, I filled these gaps using some uh, super glue uh, and that's applied to the um, gaps and then you just spray some accelerator on it to get it to um, solidify right away. Um, you might have to do that a few times though as these gaps are pretty thick. Well, they say there's a tool for every job and that's especially true in uh, hobbying and you can see here there's, uh, there's metal files, there's uh, small uh, pencil files, there's um, regular nail files, all kinds of files that will be used to finish off this body. Okay, um, here's the model after it's all been filed and sanded and the seams filled. Um, it actually took a couple hours to clean this all up. Um, so it's going to be um, a task, um, but uh, if you do this properly, you'll get a good looking model. Next, I use some squadron green putty, um, but use the, your favorite putty, your modeling putty, uh, to fill all the gaps that uh, are on the model and including the ones that you filled. As you saw, the, uh, the top wasn't too bad, but the bottom of the model, a uh, considerable amount of putty. The landing gear doors and the bomb bay doors weren't lying correctly, so flush was an issue. 
and even with the CA that I'd used earlier it didn't build up enough so uh, squadron putty will fix that after it's dry and sand it all down flush and scribe the door lines. Use some 220 grit sandpaper to uh, do a first pass and knock the putty down to about uh, flush level with the body. Clean the dust off of the uh, green squadron putty and then I applied a second coat using some of the white putty uh, to see where uh, the difference was and make sure that I didn't sand too far uh, by finishing it up. When I was done I had still found some low spots so I had to add additional coating of green again this time uh, to fill in all the low spots. Now we'll do some of the same work on the wings and um, in the same manner you guessed it uh, some green putty to fill the voids and sand them with some 220 grit to start. After all that sanding I decided to switch gears a little bit and start working on the windows. I use a combination of different uh, widths of the Tamiya masking tape and some razor blades to start cutting in the um, uh, windows and uh, the frames on those. After applying a piece of tape to a section you just carefully cut along the window frames uh, to expose the, the frame portion and cover the windows. You do this for each section and some areas can get tricky with compound curves um, you just have to make sure you um, burnish down the tape at those edges. Just take your time and uh, keep going until you're finished and as you can see there's a lot of glass on the B25 but here it is all finished off. I use some micro crystal clear product to attach all the clear components. You can use Elmer's type white glue or any of the clear glues available for this uh, purpose. Now when it dries uh, the crystal clear it, you can't even see it and you can paint over it. So uh, the nose and the canopy then can be glued into place uh, using your glue. Next we'll glue the tail gunner's glass into place and I decided, decided to uh, leave the top turret glass off until it's, the body's painted. It's easier to mask the guns without the glass in place. Next I wanted to scribe the door panels uh, panel lines back onto the airframe and to do this I used some Dymo tape and the back edge of a number 11 hobby blade. Cutting a piece of the Dymo tape that's longer than you really need you peel the liner off and then place it along the edge of the panel or the door where you want the panel line scribed. Now using the back edge of a number 11 blade carefully scribe a groove onto the airframe. Make several light passes rather than one heavy pass and this is where the, um, the gap filling CA pays off. If I had just used putty it would chip as I dragged the blade along the tape but on the CA glue it just cuts a line through. Okay all of the filling and the sanding has been done and now it's time to prime and see what happened. I used the uh, Tamiya uh, surface primer it's one that I really like. It uh, dries well, fills small voids, and sands well. And before priming, uh, I wiped down the model with a, um, a prep saw. And then uh, after that was dried, I went over it with a tack rag to remove any dust. Difficult to see in the photos, the top and the bottom of the fuselage uh, had been uh, primed, but there's uh, still some voids. Um, and I didn't do a good enough job so now it's back to work. Now it's back to the green squadron putty and apply those that to the uh, bad spots that I found uh, on the voids. Again sanding off the um, putty with some uh, finer and progressive grits of sandpaper and rescribing a few doors later she was ready to prime again to see what we've got. So this time we've got an acceptable finish um, the voids are gone and the scribed panels look pretty good. So gather up these parts, um, the fuselage of course, the, uh, the airframe, also the, um, the cowls, the top turret, the port and starboard machine gun housings and to create the effect of an aluminum aircraft I used some Model Master aluminum non-buffing metalizer uh, in the aluminum color and in the past I've used uh, the buffing brands uh, but it uh, doesn't seem to be available much anymore. But uh, this should work. Uh, it can be only be airbrushed and needs to be painted with a really low pressure. So I spray between 
10 and 15 PSI. And the metalizer paints, uh, they also require a coat of sealer applied after the color paint is, uh, is dried. You see here the uh, effects of the uh, top coat and uh, the color coat there. Uh, the the uh, top of the fuselage has been sprayed now and we're going to let that set and dry and paint the bottom after that has uh, has well uh, cured very well. We'll also paint the additional parts um, that we talked about, the cowls, the top turret, the machine gun housings. And once the uh, color coat is dried on those pieces, uh, including the bottom of the aircraft, we'll give it a, a sealer coat to uh, keep that metalizer intact. With the airframe and attendant pieces drying, we can work on the engines. Here you can see they've been painted flat black and dry brushed with a silver pencil, just like the machine guns were. The props get painted in four steps, starting by spraying the tips yellow. I use Insignia Yellow, it's um, FS33538, and the pigments in the yellow paint really need to be mixed well before spraying, so make sure that you do a good job of mixing that. The yellow head dried. I masked off the tips of the props to protect the yellow from the next coat of paint. Then I applied several coats of flat black. That's FS37038. The hubs of the props are um, steel color and they're painted with a brush. I used um, Tester 1780 and a small tip paint brush with a light touch is all it takes. If you get a little color on the blades, uh, it's a simple fix with the flat black. Again, using the silver pencil, I added some paint chips to the leading edge of the blades. The props are complete and ready to put onto the engine. Now we'll move on to the decals. The decals responded very well. They come off nicely and uh, they conform pretty well, but you'll still need to use some of the uh, setting solutions available to make it conform to any contours or panel lines, etc. So I use the Microscale product that uh, works very good for most decals. Now we're going to apply that with some warm water, let it set, blot it off where it's, if it's in position, and use a little of the uh, setting solution to keep it into place and uh, dry close to the body. So the decals have dried at least overnight. Seal them with a clear coat. I use some of the Future Floor Polish uh, that's been rebranded about four or five times. Um, but it works very well and uh, it gives a nice sheen for um, you know making any kind of future decal applications possible but it keeps the decals mostly in place and sealed. Well there you have it this old kit despite its misgivings and old mold technology still looks good if you're willing to apply some elbow grease and get the job done with a lot of patience. As it, uh, as it hangs right now from the ceiling it's really looking good and it'll make a great diorama if you want to put an opponent's uh, plane in front of it and show it some action. So, uh, if I were you, I would uh, consider one of these uh, because of the price point and put it on my shelf. We hope you like this premium scale model kit review and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on our ROR icon in the lower right hand of any review. Or you can find us on Facebook and our website, rideonreplicas.com. Thanks.